JP says, I'd be interested in scan vulnerability analysis and mapping, mapping, finding the controls. I heard that the scan results don't always map to controls. I, I don't know why though okay this one jp i think I'm, i might just do this one in the future because i get a lot of, of questions about what's called stigs security technical implementation guides and the sec which what i do is i'll set up a lab on my computer which i already have i have one i would like to just go through it myself and then show i've done this before if you go to youtube and combo courses i did one where i broke down what are called guys are basically they itemize each one of the controls of vulnerabilities that end up on on Windows systems on applications. They itemize them. They have to give each control that you should have a number. The Department of Defense does this, and they're very thorough about it. So a lot of organization and industries throughout the world actually use the stuff that they put out there because it's very useful. So they have this common number of security controls, and those controls do map to a CIS control or to a NIST 800. And in fact, most of them if not all of them map in some way, because if nothing else, if let me give you a specific example, let's say Windows Windows 11 comes out, right? And then they have a vulnerability in the AV portion of the tool. Like the AV tool has a zero day exploit or something as antivirus. And the antivirus, so this stuff happens by the way, <laughs> there's, a, there's some kind of a flaw there. So, and they'll say it's CCI-578-2022 or something, whatever it is, right? And they say that you have to update this patch and that's how you fix it, something to that effect. Or you have to enable the, the automatic update on the signatures for an AV tool, something like that. that. Let's say that's a control that's in the, after you scan, you'll find that one. Well, that maps directly to SI, SI2, which is flaw remediation for NIST 800. So that's one example of how now flaw remediation. That's a very broad term that covers many different things that can cover operating systems, software, it, hardware, like it can cover so many different things. And they make it like that on purpose. And this the same thing with CIS controls that we that you're looking at here. CIS controls are broad. These they're broad enough to where they can cover many things because you're having to deal with vendor agnostic situations like you're not always going to have a windows system you're not always going to have a mac system so you have to make it write it in such a way that it's all encompassing for the organization to adjust so that they can meet the control they can put the security best practices in place no matter what vendor that they're using so I hope that makes sense i hope i'm not speaking gibberish here but okay but yeah to answer your question i will i will do one of those one of these days i'll set everything up in advance. Okay. JP also says, yes, that would be great if one day you can make a topic discussion in the future video. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. And I've gotten that question before, so I will be covering that. Navi. Thanks Navi for joining me, man. I always see you on here. I appreciate you. He says, Hey Bruce, thanks for a regular live streams. Yeah. These are not easy by the way. <laughs> I really, sometimes I'm like, Oh God. I don't... Once I get doing it, I'm good, but starting it for whatever reason, it's just hard for me. I don't know why. Uh, 